Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Garuda Linux. So we're going to start off with a web browser. So you can get Garuda Linux from GarudaLinux.org. That's G-A-R-U-D-A-L-I-N-U-X.org. And it's forward slash index.html. And that takes you to this page that you see here. Uh, and you can see, uh, welcome to Garuda Linux. Choose your desktop environment and then you've got very various different uh, desktops available. And you can see it looks quite stylish. So I'm going to go to the download page. And you can see minimum requirements, 30 gigabytes of storage space, 4 gigabyte RAM, video card, and 64-bit system. Uh, it's got an installation procedure here, but we're not going to worry about that because we're just going to follow this video. So you're going to scroll down to where the downloads are and you can see all the different versions here. I'm going to be going for the uh, Dragonized KDE version. Uh, and you'll see that there's two of these available. There's the Dragonized edition, which is the standard one. Then you've got a gaming one, which comes with all the gaming things installed as well. I'm just going to go for the Dragonized one. And you can choose whether you download direct or from torrents, source forge, etc. So I'm just going to do direct. And you see the download starts in the bottom left hand corner. So whilst that's doing that, we'll go to another tab and we type etcher.io. That's E T C H E R dot I O. And you're going to click on download etcher. This works uh, for any operating system so you can do it on Windows or Linux so in this case I'm going to use the Windows installer uh, click download and that will download in the bottom left corner so you're going to need a um, USB drive that, uh, that's either completely blank or hasn't got data that you want to keep on it um, because it's going to get wiped and it needs to be around about uh, I'd choose an 8 gig um, USB drive or bigger um, don't go too high because otherwise it, there's no need really. So 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes is probably the sort of one you want to go for. If you open up your Explorer and you're going to go to your Downloads folder and you can see we've got Bellino Etcher here. Going to click I agree. If you minimize the Explorer you'll see that the installation is happening in the background. So uh, when Etcher starts, it should start automatically, but if not, you can always double click on the icon that appears on the desktop, click flash from file, and you're going to go to your downloads folder, and your ISO image should appear here. Uh, mine doesn't because I've already downloaded it elsewhere. For me, it's in this downloads folder here. Um, so select the Garuda. Then select your target. In my case, it's this USB drive here. You can see the same reason. Click select, and then click flash. It'll give you an indication of how long it's going to take here. Uh, I'd allow 15, 20 minutes. Uh, click yes for this prompt here. And you can see um, it, <laughs> it kind of, uh, it does level out eventually, so it's going to take about eight minutes, it says, but by the time it does the verification, it'll probably be about 15 minutes. So um, for you, it'll be instantly, but uh, for me, it'll be about 15 minutes before we start again. It's worth noting um, that Etcher works on Linux as well as Windows. So um, I can open Chrome from, I'm using Zubuntu here as an example, but um, it works on most Linux distributions. So you can go to etcher.io and go to download and in this case I want the app image so what we're going to do is uh, in order to install the app image you need to open a terminal and sudo uh, this is for Ubuntu based displays apt install libfuse2 And you can see I've already got it installed. So you might already have it installed as well. You can't just run the app image straight away. You have to go to where you downloaded it. 
and what we do is right click properties and permissions and you want to allow this file to run as a program and now when I double click it um, you can see it runs so um, after the point of this is it actually runs on Windows and Linux which is why um, I recommend it as the program for um, creating uh, bootable USB drives so again the same principle of what, um, applies you choose the ISO image you choose your target and then you choose flash and you have to enter your password and again it will take uh, a few minutes to to create um, finally uh, whether you're using Windows or Linux you should see this screen here at this point you can remove the USB drive and put it in the computer that you want to install um, Garuda onto so if you want to use the machine you're already on yeah, you have to reboot the machine um, uh, with the USB drive still inserted, but if you want to put it in another machine, obviously insert it into the other machine and turn it on. So turn on your computer that you want to install to, and then press the function key for the boot menu. In my case, it's F7. It differs from manufacturer to manufacturer, and you want to pick the USB drive. As you can see, mine's beginning to get a bit messy. I need to clear that up, but it's the top one. Eventually you get to this screen and you can either choose to boot with open source drivers or uh, proprietary drivers. I'm going to choose proprietary drivers, that's the default. So uh, once you're booted into uh, Garuda, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's fairly stylish. I mean, uh, look at that image. That's a really great background image. I love the colouring, I love the theming. Um, so you can either install by clicking this um, button here on the welcome screen or you can click the great big icon in the top left corner. And I'm going to click the one in the top left corner. It appears to be single click. And here we are at the installer, very much like the Manjaro installer. Now, so we're going to pick our language. So in my case, British English. Click next. Uh, choose your location. It's automatically worked out I'm in the UK. So I'm going to click next. Uh, obviously, if you're elsewhere and it doesn't get the right thing, you can pick the right thing. You can also choose which language to use and then locales, etc. And then the keyboard layout is automatically worked out my keyboard layout. But again, you can just choose the one that suits you. And then it's uh, what do you want to do? Um, you can install alongside. In my case, I've got uh, OpenSUSE installed at the moment. You can replace a partition. So if you've got a particular partition that you want to replace, you can do that. Uh, manual partition and is um, if you want to create your own partitions. But in this case, um, I want uh, Garuda to be my only operating system. So I'm going to do a raised disk. And then I'm going to click Next. And then you enter your username. Uh, so you enter your name and what do you want to what name do you want to use to log in? So that's your username. Um and then you've got the PC name. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. As you know, I'm gonna call it Garuda PC. And then uh, you need a password. And then you can choose to log in automatically. Don't recommend this at all. And you can use the same password for the administrator account. That's up to you if you do that or not and then click next and then you've got a summary of what's going to happen uh, this is your last chance really um, to turn back you should always back up your system before um, installing any other operating system or doing anything with your disks because everything will be wiped at this stage so um, this, this is your last chance if you're happy click install and you can see uh, a little pop-up pops up saying really this is your last chance so click install now and the installation will begin uh, once the installation has finished uh, you should see this all done you can now uh, reboot your computer um, at some point you'll need to remove the USB drive after the reboot starts and then you should boot into Garuda 
and you should have a fully installed GUDA system. As you see, you get to this menu here, and then if you choose the first option, it will boot into GUDA. So after you've logged in, there's uh, some post setup stuff um, to go on. Um, now this is an Arch-based distro, so um, it's rolled in release, so you'll get lots of updates and uh, um, you should install them wherever necessary. So here's the Welcome to Gruda. Uh, this interactive assistant will help you set up your system. So click OK. It's asking for your password. This is for the updates. Uh, it's going to do a full system upgrade, um, so I'm going to do that. And click yes, it's a one and a half gig download, and then it's going to install four and a half gig. So despite just installing the system, I'm now going to install another four and a half gigs worth of system. We're going to let that run, and uh, I'll let you know when we get to the next step. So we're coming to the end of this um, upgrade now. Um, it doesn't actually take that long. Uh, five, ten minutes. So you get this message at the bottom. Um, there's not much you can do about it. You just press enter. And the setup exists. Uh, assistant is now looking for NVIDIA drivers. You won't find any on here. And now you can work your way through this screen. Uh, do you need printer scanner and sample support? So yes, I do need printer support. Do you want to apply additional performance tweaks? At the cost of power usage, no. Do you want to install grid wallpapers? Yes, why not? Do you need pen testing software? No, I don't. Uh, input, you can choose your fonts. Software center, you can choose um, for software centers. I'm actually going to do uh, discover. Uh, kernels, uh, we're not going to worry about that at this moment in time. Office. So if I look in the top corner and go down to Office, you haven't got an Office package installed. Uh, in fact, let's have a look at the in what is installed. There's not much. You've got the Fire Dragon web browser. Um, generally speaking, there's a media player, etc. The simple screen record I installed. So uh, do you want an Office suite? Uh, so you can have fully featured, same as above stable. You can have um, only Office. Uh, WPS off uh, WPS office free office yo so there's a whole load here uh, I think we'll go um, LibreOffice and then browsers you can choose your browsers um, so there's a LibreOffice fork with enhanced KDE so Fire Dragon's already installed but you can install other browsers it doesn't have Google itself in this list, I don't think. But you have Opera and other ones, so if you want Tor or something like that. Um, and then email clients, you can choose which one you want. Uh, communications, you can choose to install Telegram or Discord, Zoom, Skype. Microsoft Teams. So let's do that. Let's do Zoom Teams. Let's have Discord and Telegram installed. Uh, Internet. Uh, Torrent Clients, Nextcloud, Remote Access. Audio. Uh, so we've got Store Player, Lollipop, Audacious. Uh, so you've got Elisa or K-Wave. So K-Wave's an editor of uh, Elisa's player. So let's install that. Because this is all your choice, you get to choose the things that you want installed as part of Garuda. So this is a good thing. Uh, so I'll need Caden Live for editing the video. Um, video player, I think we've already got that installed. Uh, we've got a media player installed, but we haven't got... I do like the Dragon video player, so we're going to install that. But you can do VLC as well. 
graphics. Uh, you can choose um, any one of these. Uh, GIMP is the one that a lot of people choose, but you know, if you don't use all the features of GIMP, I mean, we're not all um, image editing gurus, so you might not want that. But there's Blender as well, if you happen to be. Um, there's photo management apps, so let's install that. Uh, multimedia. So you can have this for watching live TV. You've got Handbrake, you've got Kodi, etc. Um, and then development, you've got Visual Studio. You can choose the proprietary version. There's also uh, KDevelop and NetBeans, PyCharm, the community edition, uh, GitHub, if you want to install GitHub, and Docker as well. Virtualization software, so you can install VirtualBox and GNOME boxes, uh, KVM, etc. So this is like um, your initial package management setup, but there is a you can obviously install later on. Um, that will come in the actual review of Garuda, how I'll show you how to do that. But this is your initial setup, and so we're into other. Um, so. Um, you can um, use Droid Cam and Wallpaper Changes, Conky. Um, I quite like Conky, so I'm going to install that. And now you click OK, and it's going to apply all the things I've just clicked. It's asking for my password again. And it's going to install all the packages. You can see it's looking for one gigabyte of downloads and then almost three and a half gigabytes of installation. Um, installation so click yes and away we go again it's going to retrieve the packages and install them so it's looking for 194 different packages um, I'm going to pause the video at this point and I'll let you know when it's finished as you can see uh, that has now um, finished so press return and your system is ready to go and that is the end of the video. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button because there's a review coming of Garuda where I show you how to set things up like printers, Bluetooth, etc., and things like that. And I'll, I'll show you some of the good and bad points of Garuda. And uh, thank you for watching.